You're listening to Soap Dirt, the latest in television entertainment news. Hey there, YNR fans. It's Belinda from Soap Dirt, and I've got your early edition spoilers for YNR. These run from Monday, December 18th, all the way through Friday, December 22nd. We've got a lot to unpack. We've got big things happening. We've got a baby bump watch in real life for one of the actors. We've got boozing, we've got guilt, we've got DNA, we've got so much. Hey, if you haven't already, please reach down, click subscribe so you don't miss any of our updates. Now let's dig in. So I'm going to tell you real quick what's going to happen the end of this week to give you some context for next week. On Wednesday the 13th, we're going to have Victoria and Cole agreeing that they have to know the truth about Claire. They have everything ready for the DNA test, but they are committed to helping her even if she's not their daughter. And Michael weighs in and and says definitely she has been psychologically harmed. She needs psychiatric care and not prison. And so he's going to make sure that he can make that happen. Devon and Nate talk about getting back to work at Chancellor Winters. And Nate is very cautious. He's very polite. We'll see how it goes. And Heather cannot wait to use Lily's absence to get closer to Daniel Romilotti. She shows up at his place. She's making herself at home. She's physically getting very close to him. Abby has taken a note of this when they go out later. So yeah, and I've got an update for you on Crystal Colel when I get to the second week stuff. Nikki decides to tell Audra about her ordeal in Oregon while Nick refused to tell Adam, kind of sketch. And then Nikki goes home and refills her flask because she was boozing all day at work. And then Victoria shows up while Nikki has decided to chug straight from the bottle. Then on Thursday, the 14th, Jordan is plotting her scheme. She's got poison. She's got knives. She's got a just a head full of wet cats going crazy. And Victor gets news that he finds suspicious, probably an update on crazy Jordan. And Nikki is trying to hide her boozing. And I wonder if she, I mean, realistically, if Victoria walks in and her mother is anywhere near that liquor cart, she should know, you know, and her mom was almost funneling that booze, just that there's not a funnel on the liquor cart. Because, you know, classy people don't have funnels with their liquors, right? And Phyllis tries to tempt Danny on th- Thursday. Then on Friday, Summer tries to get her feelings for Chance under control because she's feeling hot and heavy about him. And Ashley cuts the deal with Tucker. She has made a plan with Jack to try and sell, I think I'm pronouncing it right, Glossade. The company, they were starting together, but they're going to try and drive up the price so that they can basically bankrupt Tucker so he won't have the funds to make mischief, is my understanding of this plot. And Kyle spends some time with Audra, and it says they have unfinished business, but I'm sure it's going to be bedroom business. Then going into December 18th, at the very end of this, I'm going to give you an update on Crystal Khalil's baby bump watch. So... Next week, Jordan versus Nikki comes to a shocking climax, says official spoilers. I am very worried about Jordan coming for Nikki because right now Mrs. Newman is sauced up, drinking all day, and will be in no condition to fight off crazy Jordan because that woman is physically strong, pretty resourceful, and bat crap crazy. And if you remember, maybe you don't, it's been a minute, Jordan's wicked sister, Eve Howard, stabbed Nikki way back in the day over her obsession with Victor. And with Jordan unpacking those knives, all those stabby, stabby implements, you know, when she came to that shady hotel in Genoa City, I wonder if she's planning the same fate. Is she going to stab poor Nikki? So... I kind of hope that they catch Jordan alive, but don't kill her. And that means you can't let Nick in her vicinity because he basically smashed Ashlyn's head in and gave Sharon a knife to finish off Cameron Kirsten. Nick can be quite fatal because he's just a big brute in a nice suit with cute dimples. I'll say all that. So I think it's kind of good to leave villains alive so they can return to do bad things at a later date, like how Ian Ward is floating around out there and Marco Anaselli is still floating around out there. But I suspect in this case, Jordan might not survive it, but I hope they don't kill off Colleen Zink. I do think it would go a long way towards her redemption if somehow Claire is out of jail and saves her grandma, but I don't see the wheels of justice turning that fast between now and this promised major showdown next week, but you never know. And 
this showdown should be epic. I wonder if Jordan's going to be able to slip past security at the ranch. I mean, other villains have done it not too long ago. Remember Cameron Kirsten slid in, he knocked out a guard, stole his outfit, and showed up at the door to drop off. Didn't he kill Faith's cat? He did something awful. That ranch, for all their security, doesn't seem safe at all, and there's really only a couple of places to get to Nikki, and that's generally at the Newman Tower and at the ranch, and the ranch is where the bad people seem to get away with more stuff. So we will get confirmation from DNA tests very soon that Claire is indeed Eve Howard, the daughter of Colin Victorias that supposedly died in 1998. But this shouldn't be shocking news to regular listeners here because showrunner Josh Griffith already confirmed it in an interview and I reported it last week. Next week ends on Friday the 22nd and we should be seeing Christmas celebrations ramping up in Genoa City because the following Monday is December 25th. They shouldn't air a new episode on the holiday. They never do. Look for the next new episode on Tuesday the 26th so we'll probably have Christmas celebrations start on the 22nd carry over into the 26th we know there's going to be a a summer's Romilotti gathering to kick off with Daniel bringing Heather along and of course with Lucy and Danny bringing Christine along and Summer and Phyllis apparently stag you know And that comes according to recent press photos with both Lucy and Summer along for the ride. And that shouldn't be awkward at all. Meanwhile, I don't see how the Newmans can possibly have a happy Christmas, except the Newmans that the core family pushes aside, you know, Adam and Abby. Nikki just told Audra about the Oregon ordeal. Nick's refusing to tell Adam. No one's telling Adam anything. And then with Nikki versus Jordan hitting a climax next week, I feel like it's going to put a dimmer on Christmas for Nikki and Victoria and Victor and Nick. Meanwhile, Sally and Adam, Adam, who's being kept in the dark, you know, that's fine. They can just do their thing and celebrate their renewed love next week and bring in the holiday together. And Abby can focus on Devon and their son, Dominic, and try to forget that Tucker can be the Grinch that stole Christmas and Jabot and Chancellor Winter since he's got schemes all over the place. So one last note, I'm going to show you a brand new photo of Crystal Kalel that she and her friends just posted. And it looks like her baby bump is gone. She had a pretty sizable bump. They were having to hide it behind major stuff all over the set. So this is a brand new photo posted by herself and her three friends. So I do think it's brand new. And based on this photo, I suspect she has given birth but it's keeping it private for now because you can look no bump, no bump at all. And I guess that means congratulations to Crystal Kalel. I mean, her last air date was December 7th. So that means she was already off on maternity leave in early November. So she might even have a several week old baby by now, which is good stuff for her. Congrats. Too bad Heather's trying to make a move on Lily's man while she's off fighting wildfires and other weird excuses they give in for her absence. And we expect Lily to remain gone for a couple of months while Crystal enjoys her bonding time with her new baby. All right, that's everything. If you haven't already, please reach down and click subscribe so you don't miss any of our updates. Definitely drop your comments about what you're excited to see next week. And p- come back soon because we are here talking YNR seven days a week. This is been Belinda from Soap Dirt, as always. Thank you for being a loyal listener. Follow us wherever you get your podcast because you don't want to miss the next episode. Soap Dirt is on all the major podcast platforms, including Apple Podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and more. 